Hey folks, Pastor Jordan here bringing you this week's sermon preview on this cool and windy Thursday morning. Um, still a beautiful day though. The sky is uh, clear and those big puffy white clouds and, and the breeze is nice and uh, crisp. The humidity from yesterday is gone and it's just a just a gorgeous day. So there's your, uh, there's your pastoral weather report for the week. Um, you also uh, might hear a little road work going on in the background. There's a crew out here uh, patching some spots on, uh, on West Glenville Road, so uh, I apologize for any of that extra noise that you might hear. Uh, this coming Sunday, we will worship uh, outdoors. The weather is going to be clear. It's going to be a lot like it is right now, actually. Um, so it might be just a touch on the cool side, you know, mid to high 50s, we're hoping. Um, but, uh, you know, should be nice in the sunshine. Um, those of you who've been coming to worship, you know uh, how nice that, uh, that asphalt of the driveway warms up. So you can, uh, you can sit down there um, and, and get some of that radiant heat from the sun. It should be a sunny morning. So uh, we look forward to, uh, to joining for worship on, on Sunday morning. And now that we are in the summer season, um, officially, uh, we are going to be launching into some sermon series. And so that's where we'll be um, this week. We'll start our, our summer sermon series um, uh, grouping. And uh, the first sermon series is going to be a six-week series on the prophet Jeremiah and, and his writings in the book of Jeremiah. And, um, and so we're going we're gonna to look at two things this week. We're going to look first at his call. Um, we'll notice in his, his call by God how in, in some ways his response uh, mimics Moses and the way that Moses responded when he was called by God with a sense of trepidation, a sense of being unworthy for the call. And I always, I always like when we hear these stories about prophets because uh, so often we look at the, the prophets of the Bible and we look at them and we, we have them in this elevated position in our minds because of the stories that we've heard. And we know, um, you know some, of their, some of their stories, we know their impact on, on the uh, people of God of the time and now also their impact throughout the ages on the church as it has grown. And so we have this uh, kind of elevated understanding of who they are. But when we hear the stories of their call, we realize, you know, they're kind of just like regular folks, aren't they? Um, you know, they're, they were kind of in the right place at the right time. Um, but, but a lot of times they weren't feeling as though they were, they were worthy for what they were being called to do. And that's kind of like us, isn't it? Right? We are called to, to live as a church community here in this place, but then to, to let that spill out into the world around us, to care for, for those that are around us, to, uh, to minister to those who are around us, and to, to share the good news of this life as people who are um, followers of Jesus Christ, proclaimers of the gospel, those who live towards the kingdom of heaven. But sometimes in this work we feel unworthy, don't we? You know, we feel like we're not cut out for it. I know I've, I've had those moments, um, being honest, uh, in, in my life, uh, both preparing for ministry and then working in ministry. There are plenty of times where I don't feel like, um, like I'm an expert or I'm, you know, prepared for this in the right way. And, and, I, and I imagine that all of you have had experiences like that at times. And so that's the first thing we'll look at with Jeremiah, his call and what that, what that means for us. Then we'll look at uh, this sermon that he delivers, and it's uh, the temple sermon. And it's going to get at the heart of the, the issue that Jeremiah is, is working with. And that was um, this call to the people that he was, he was given by the Lord. He was given a call to the people to, to decentralize the worship uh, of the temple. Now, their worship was happening at the temple in Jerusalem, but... Because of that, there was a, a kind of bleed over to where worship wasn't necessarily um, at the temple. It was, in some ways, of the temple, right? That, that the worship was about this thing that they had, right? And that this temple had become so important. And drawing pilgrimages there had become so important that they had lost the understanding of God actually dwelling with them. Jeremiah begs the question of, can God dwell with people without dwelling in the temple, right? Does the, is the temple a necessary element in this, or does God just dwell with people? 
And this is a beautiful thing coming right off of last week in our celebration of Pentecost as we, as we, enjoy, as we enjoy some Pentecost wind right now. I'm, I'm sure you can hear it on the, uh, the microphone as the, as the wind is, is moving as it did on Sunday here for our Pentecost celebration. But coming out of Pentecost and this understanding that God uh, moves and God goes and God is, is uh, constantly spurring on God's church so that we might, uh, we might follow God in ministry. All of this uh, reminds us that God is, is on the move, not necessarily that God is, God is particularly placed inside a temple or a, or a specific place. And so it gets at the heart of what is it that we worship? What is it that we worship? Do we worship institutions that we that we set up around ourselves that we have grown accustomed to and that we really appreciate? Or do we worship God? So that's what we'll look at um, this Sunday as we gather for worship. And I invite you to be with us for that. Uh, come bring a chair. You'll be warm enough in the sun. If you, if you think you'll get too warm, there's plenty of shade. Um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. There's plenty of space. I invite you to come and be with us uh, here for worship. This is a worshiping community. And we can't do it without everybody participating. So please come and be a part of this worshiping community. If you can't be with us, then we'd be right here on YouTube. As always, uh, staying strong and sending that uh, good news of the gospel out on, on the internet as well. So however you can be with us, you're welcome. But we make a special invitation for you to be with us on, on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here around the gazebo or here on this YouTube channel. I hope you all have a blessed Thursday, and I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.